again, uh, just blown away. Well, when you, it's funny that you said that you hadn't heard of it because when it was released in America, there was almost no promotion for this film. So people really didn't know about it. It was strictly word of mouth. In fact, it was a huge, huge hit overseas and Quentin Tarantino would go and get mobbed. And ever since this movie aired overseas, he is like a king there. It's like David Hasselhoff. Oh yeah, the Hoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, well- sorry, uh, You would love that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Reservoir Dogs was released in 1992. Its runtime was one hour, 39 minutes, and it stars a bevy. This is why we called it the Ensemble Gangster Movie Edition, because it starred Harvey Cartel as Mr. White. It starred Tim Roth as Mr. Orange, Michael Madsen as Mr. Blonde, Chris Penn as Eddie, Steve Buscemi as Mr. Pink, Lawrence Tierney as Joe. Actor. Yeah, that's right. Buscemi was in both films. Yes, so we're, yeah. super, super cool. Uh, Quentin himself always does a cameo in his films. He was Mr. Brown and Randy Brooks as all the way. I, I am at least appreciative that Tarantino's cameos have become smaller since. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, his, his part in uh, Pulp Fiction is one of my favorites. I, I mean, it's he's not a great actor, but the, he's, dialogue the scripts that he writes are so good it's it's impossible even if you just read the words it's going to work and that's what he does yeah he's kind of a character himself so that's it works a little bit mm -hmm. but it is interesting you know that the guy who wrote uh denver was trying to create this sort of like organic language or something but quentin tarantino just writes organic dialogue mm -hmm. right I was thinking the he same thing. He just writes how he thinks, which is what makes his stuff so strong because it's strictly his point of view, not him trying to be something else. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, let's talk about the writer for the other film. First of all, let's talk about the director, uh, Gary Fledger. Is it Fledger or Fleeter? I'm not sure. No, oh, sorry, Gary. Gary Fleeter. <laughs> He's <laughs> going to be so upset. Oh, no. Gary. When he hears this. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, get, we're gonna get massive phone calls. Well, this will be the question because we're fairly certain that uh, Zach would hang out with Quentin Tarantino for some drinks, but would he hang out with Gary Fleeter? I don't know. This was his very first feature film and that might be why it was maybe not as smooth running as, as Reservoir Dogs in my opinion, but uh, he only has seven, seven movie credits to his name. Uh, but some of them are good, like Runaway, Jury, and Kiss the Girls, Imposter. Those are some decent mm -hmm. films that he had after this. He's mm -hmm. mostly uh, known for directing TV shows. The writer, now here's an interesting thing. We usually have multiple writers on, on movies that we find that maybe could have been stitched together a little bit better. But this one, Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, written by Scott Rosenberg, sole credit. Which is interesting because like he has done movies since that are at least, I mean, like, you know, the Jumanji sequel, I mm -hmm. think most people liked it. Uh, high Fidelity, one well, of that. Yeah, High Fidelity is freaking great. Yeah. Gone yeah. in 60 seconds. I like, I like yeah. Con Air. I mean, Con Air was great. Yeah. Yeah. Get me off this plane. That's <laughs> Get me off this movie. Yes, that is, that, that is 